Hey everyone, Ryan here from Next Level Property Investor and I hope you're well. So just before we get started on this video where I'm gonna show you exactly what numbers you should be tracking in your business to move the needle forward every day, make sure you subscribe to the video, um, make sure you subscribe to the channel, uh, notification bell down below. And if you're serious about building a property business, if you want to get some help, if you want some consultancy on your property business, and not just strategies, building a property business, take you to that seven figure property portfolio, head over to nextlevelpropertyinvesting.com and book a call myself, we'll see if we're a good fit. So let's dive into this. So basically, I see a lot of businesses, a lot of property businesses, and they're just, you know, out there doing, you know, daily activities, you know, they're doing a lot of good stuff. They are, you know, doing the calls, they're doing the messaging, you know, on the open rent, on spare room. They're doing, you know, everything that the books teach you to do. And, and it's all great, you know, it's all good. Activity levels is good. The only thing that I don't think helps is that most people don't know what the numbers are. You know, sometimes people don't even know what their operational numbers are. I speak to people all the time and ask them, how much you make in your service accommodation business? Or how much is your HMOs generating each month? Or what's your uh, cleaning cost per month? Or how much, um, you know, is your maintenance cost per month on, on your single lets? So and people don't have an answer. They, they, you know, and by not knowing your numbers, you can never change anything. You don't know where to go. You don't know what the direction uh, you need to take the business in. So for me, I've always been about numbers. I love spreadsheets. And you don't need to be a spreadsheet, you know, geek to to be good at business, but you do need to know your numbers, you know, and you need to know vital numbers that move the business forward. So I'm going to give you a bit of an uh, in-depth look at kind of what I track on a daily basis to make sure that we're acquiring enough stuff and make sure that we've got our pipelines full of deals. And obviously that has helped scale, um, not only with just myself in the beginning, but now my team that are around me, you know, we all use the same trackers and we're always looking for activity levels because activity levels in the right areas and the right channels create a result and it's all about just knowing your numbers and working your numbers back so if you know that 15 viewings equals one property deal and you want four deals this week then obviously you need to go on 60 viewings this month uh, sorry if you want four deals this month then you've got to go on 60 viewings this month and it can become as straightforward as that when you start tracking your numbers and you know what your closing percentages are it's not a guess it's pure fact and you know it helps time and time and time again so first of all we start with kind of the, the activity for the acquisitions so um, you know, how many conversations we're having, how many outbound calls we're making, you know, what uh, opportunities we've got in terms of controlling strategies, what opportunities we've got in terms of asset building strategies. And, you know, this then filters down into the different months that we've got. So it gives us a good yearly snapshot of where we're at. Now, what I'll also do is just bring you down to our current month, which is October, and you'll see this yellow line here, which is today. So every day this shifts. And it shows us basically, you know, how many viewings we've booked and when we secure a property, it then breaks down into what we've done. It then gives us in terms of our team. So I'll just reduce this slightly so I can bring it all in. So it gives us a good snapshot of what's going on. Um, you know, how many conversations we started, what our booking percentages are. It gives us as by the quarters and it gives us as a total annual. Um, you know, so that for us is with the starting point, it's the activity levels, it's what goes into the business, what goes into the top of the pipeline, which then starts feeding down. Now there is a stage before this, which is obviously the awareness stage and the lead generation stage. That part of the business is obviously looked after by the marketing department and that sits in its own little silo itself. And again, the marketing department need to feed the sales department. Now. We get our meetings every week and we discuss key KPIs. So out of all this data, I have some key KPIs that everyone has to bring to the meeting. And it's the same for the marketing team, same for the delivery team, same for the operations. And those KPIs will have a negative effect. So we could say that some of the KPIs that they're off in the marketing team might reflect that the KPIs in the acquisition team are off as well. It makes common sense that if we're not acquiring enough leads, then there's not enough leads to go at. But at the same time, there are things that the acquisition team do on a standalone basis that doesn't require marketing activity, which should, should still get results. So don't worry if you haven't got multiple people working in your business and you know section it. You might just have to be every team to start off with and get it going, just like I did at the beginning. And you've got to do everything, but it's about knowing what to do and tracking your results because there's no point just banging your head against the wall time and time and time again. So what we then do is we go into... Um, our acquisition tracker sheets. So schedule viewings is how many viewings we've got on the calendar today. So every day you wake up, how many have we got on the calendar? How many have we actually done in terms of live viewings? You know, so it gives us our show percentages. How many offers we made from those live um, viewings? 
and then how many sales have we agreed and how many sales have we completed on. You know, there's a big difference there between an agreed and completed because not everything goes through. Obviously, I'm looking at the completed stats at the end of the year to see what our numbers, true numbers are, but I also want to know what the fallout is from you know what we agree to what we complete. So I can then readjust the numbers for the next year. So you know if I know that we are only getting say 80% completion from agreed, then I might set my targets knowing that and I'll factor in that extra 20% that we're going to lose out to make sure that we come in on numbers. Uh, it then goes through you know various percentages which you control um, automatically put in through the figures here. Uh, how many controlling properties, how much have we made, how many assets have we acquired, and then there's an additional strategy box there. So we might have like lease options or something like that in there. Uh, what, I, what I put in here is I like to put the five-year revenue from the cash flow into that. So whenever I acquire a deal, it then puts in the five-year cash flow of that. So if it's, you know, 300 pounds uh, net per month, then, you know, it, it, it plays it out. So I'll show you what I mean here. So let's say, um, you know, let's say we had uh, 12, uh, let's say we had five units booked today and we saw four. Then obviously that brings up a show percentage. Um, let's say we had, uh, out of the four, we made three offers. Out of those three offers, we agreed um, two. And today we actually had a sale complete based on, um, based on you know activity that we had in the pipeline. So that sale actually completed today for whoever this rep was that acquired that deal. And let's just say it was an asset acquired. So let's assume, just quick maths here, 300 times 60. So that deal is gonna bring 18,000 pounds in. Um, and then as you see in the team summary here, it starts to build. So we've got schedule and view and show percentage offers. 100, you know, agreed, offer close, viewing commitment. But then it breaks it down into how much revenue are you making per offer and how much revenue are you making per viewing? Now that's across the team, but the stats are also the same for the individuals under their, uh, in their certain spreadsheets as well. So they can actually see, and you can see, which, who's performing well, who's performing poorly, what you need to tweak and where you need to focus. Now by tracking these numbers, you can change the direction of your business at ease. We then bring it into the projections sheet. So this is filled out every month by each individual team member, depending on the department, depends on the information that we go after. But what we do is we have our projection. So you know we, we need to get 60 viewings to agree 14 sales to complete on nine. Uh, we want six controlling properties and we want to acquire three assets. The total revenue will be 154 grand which would mean that we're making three and a half grand for every offer we make or three grand for every view we make. Now you might think, well, why do I want to know this information? Well, for one, it means that I can basically know if we're going to hit our targets or not by the number of viewings we've got booked in. But also motivation wise, if I was to say to you, for every viewing you go on, you're going to make three grand. Would you be more motivated to go on that viewing or not? You know, so it just changes the mindset. It changes the dynamics about how you think of stuff. And it then, you know, gives you that extra, you know, the days when you feel like you can't be bothered, that viewing that you've got to drive 20 minutes to that you don't really think's a good fit. That's worth 3,000 pounds to you. Is it worth going on that viewing? Of course it is. Now, it doesn't mean that that viewing's going to pay 3,000 pounds, but the numbers play out. And this is how numbers work. And this is how businesses work. So I then have uh, projections for each week. So. As we head into October, this is the projection for uh, one of us for for October. And then as we go through the week, we will just put in, you know, whether we've hit that or not. And, you know, how many viewings we had, you know, how many offers did we make, you know, how many sales did we agree, how many sales did we complete, you know, and it all just plays out and then it all starts to put in here. And then it starts to filter out through and your data then stays very accurate and you get your running percentages and you can track if you then track your KPIs on a Monday, you sit down, you analyze your data, you know what you've got to do for that week, and it sets you up for a good week. And that moves your business forward, you know. It, just knowing your numbers moves your business forward. And once this is all set up, um, you know, it's an absolute game changer. So um, just quick insight there into what we do on the acquisition side of our business. If you're looking for business consultancy, if you're looking to have a proper, proper property business, not just a strategy, you know, I'm not about just teaching a strategy, I'm about building a property business around one or multiple strategies for creating, you know, long-term sustainability, create that financial freedom, create that time freedom that everyone strives for when getting into property and not just treating it like a hobby. 
you know, property as a business. And if you start treating it like a business, you'll make some good money out of it. So hope that helps. Nextlevelpropertyinvesting.com. If you do want to jump on a call, have an awesome day, everyone.